Hello everyone, this is Ruth Petran. I'm Senior Corporate Scientist at R&D, and I'm here to talk to you about this new novel coronavirus that we're hearing about on a global basis. This has been called 2019 Novel Coronavirus Acute Respiratory Disease. So what do we know about this? Well, frankly, the Chinese public health authorities have identified this novel coronavirus about a month ago, and it had not been seen previously. This is why it's called a novel one. It's a new one. We're seeing that this virus causes fever and respiratory symptoms, with still the largest number of cases being reported in China. But increasingly, we are seeing others being identified in other parts of the world, other parts of Asia, a few in the U.S. and Europe, et cetera, primarily in people who have visited China. Now, we know to date that the virus has infected thousands of people with more than 100 reported deaths, but it's likely there will be more cases identified as surveillance proceeds. Early on, it was seeming that most of the cases were linked to this live animal market that we've heard about in Wuhan City, which is in a certain province called Hubei in China. But increasingly, we are hearing about cases that are really not linked to this live animal market. Not surprising, public health authorities are very actively identifying and investigating this outbreak, and the situation will certainly evolve. Because of this, the public health recommendations really focus on standard infection control practices that are set in place to reduce exposure to and transmission from a range of illnesses. And on the 30th of January, the World Health Organization elevated the status of this novel coronavirus by declaring it a public health emergency of international concern to really ensure that risk management efforts are appropriately directed at this serious concern. And this was especially directed towards those countries who may not have strong public health resources and may be ill-equipped to prepare to manage this crisis effectively. So essentially, it's a call for collaborative uh, help for the global economy and the global world. But what we need to keep in mind is this is not because of a poor response in China, but rather it also recognizing that their response is seen as quite exemplary and in large part why there are so many limited cases outside of China. But let's step back a second and think about coronaviruses. These are relatively common and they're an RNA virus that have an envelope, which mainly cause symptoms of respiratory and sometimes intestinal diseases. The structure is such, as is shown on this slide on the right, that there's regularly arranged protrusions on its surface that kind of looks like an emperor's crown, hence the name coronavirus. We know that coronaviruses can infect humans, but also other animals included uh, are many different mammals listed here on the slide. And to date, we know of six different human coronaviruses, four of them being really pretty minor, not that pathogenic, causing symptoms like the common cold. But there have been two notable ones through the years, namely severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus, or SARS, and the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome coronavirus, or MERS, which can and did cause serious respiratory diseases. This new coronavirus, that's causing the current epidemic is quite different from the human coronavirus that have been discovered and requires further scientific research, which is certainly ongoing. Transmission of coronaviruses are very uh, coronavirus specific, but we, can, but we can say they are rarely spread by fecal contamination, but may spread from an infected person to others through the air by coughing or sneezing and droplet transfer, by close personal contact, such as touching someone or shaking hands, or touching an object or surface with the virus particles on it, then touching your mouth, nose, or eyes before you wash your hands. And we are starting to see some transmission from one person to another, to some extent, with this 2019 novel coronavirus. But again, surveillance is continuing as we look to learn more about this as a transmission route. So how do we protect ourselves from this novel coronavirus? 
it's important to recognize there are no vaccines available to protect us yet, although there is some development work starting, but it will be months at least before this would be available. But there are some things that we can all do to reduce our risk of infection by doing the following. Firstly, washing your hands often and correctly. And in fact, the World Health Organization recommends performing hand hygiene with soap and water or alcohol-based hand soap, or hand rub rather, if soap and water are not available. Also, avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth with unwashed hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. And in regions where there are excessive cases being reported, avoid areas where there's live animals who are being sold or raised. And if you have fever or other symptoms after traveling home, wear a mask and seek medical advice immediately and make sure you tell the doctor where you have visited. Protecting others is also very important. So if you have cold-like symptoms, you can help protect them by doing the following. Washing your hands, wearing a mask, staying home when you're sick, avoiding close contact with others, covering your mouth and nose with a tissue when you cough or sneeze, then throwing that tissue in the trash and washing your hands, seeing a doctor, and cleaning and disinfecting objects and surfaces. So really a quick recap, these procedures to minimize infection risk really rely on implementing standard infection control practices to reduce exposure to and transmission of this illness, but certainly others as well. Following all local public health recommendations and guidance is important. Making sure your employees are informed about proper infection control procedures. Washing hand frequently with soap and water or using this alcohol-based hand sanitizer if soap and water are not readily available. Thoroughly cleaning and disinfecting hard surfaces with the right disinfecting. Following the instructions on the label. Ensuring the availability and proper training of personal protective equipment. Closely monitoring employee health and reinforcing personal hygiene, cough etiquette, and the like. Encouraging symptomatic employees to stay home. And really working to minimize close contact with persons who have symptoms of respiratory illness. And finally, for a list of products or procedures, please contact your Ecolab representative. We are here to help. Thank you very much.